Over the past couple of years, you may have heard about the appraisal gap clause. And this is a special stipulation that became very popular during the extreme sellers market that we all experienced a couple of years ago. And it's making a little bit of a comeback, unfortunately. And in a nutshell, an appraisal gap clause is an appraisal contingency. It is an appraisal contingency, but instead of the contract being contingent on an appraisal that matches the contract sales price or above, it's actually a lesser than step where the buyer agrees to pay the difference if the appraisal is lower than the contract sales price up to a certain amount. There is generally going to be a cap. You want there to be a cap unless the buyer has unlimited resources and they have the funds to cover any sort of gap. So that is what an appraisal gap clause is. And over the years, we have seen some very well-written appraisal gap clauses, and we've seen some nightmare appraisal gap clauses. Those are the ones that did not contain a floor or were somewhat of a formula for the purchase price. For example, buyer agrees to pay $5,000 over the appraised value. Then the appraisal comes in $50,000 lower and the buyer gets really, really excited because they think they're getting this really, really good deal on this property and the seller says, no, 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 I'm not going to close. So we want to avoid, avoid ambiguous contract terms. We want to think ahead and avoid issues that are going to cause a deal not to close and result in unhappy buyers and sellers. So enough about that history of the appraisal gap. In a recent CE class, I presented a couple of different scenarios, and this is one that I want us to take a look at here today, and let's go ahead and dive into it. Savannah includes an appraisal gap clause in her buyer's offer, which also includes FHA financing. I'm going to highlight that because that's a big deal. FHA financing. She is careful to use the special stipulation provided by Seth Weissman and states that the buyer will cover the difference up to $5,000. So she includes a gap, cap on the gap, $5,000. Unfortunately, the property does not appraise. The difference is $3,000. But the buyer no longer wants to purchase the property. A couple of questions here. Buyer's agents, can the buyer terminate? Seller's agents, how could this have been prevented? So this scenario is a little bit tricky because generally speaking, from our state contracts here in Georgia, special stipulations prevail over all other language in the contract. So if there was a special stipulation contained in the contract that said the buyer agreed to pay the difference, they would be obligated to. However, there is a clause in the contract that, that excludes amendatory clauses contained within FHA or VA financing exhibits. A lot to unpack here. An amendatory clause is a financing, is an appraisal contingency that basically says if the property does not appraise for at least the contract price, the buyer can walk away and should not suffer any forfeiture of earnest money or, or otherwise. So it's a blanket appraisal contingency. It runs the entire life of the contract. So special stipulations do control unless there's an amendatory clause contained on an FHA exhibit. And in this case for Savannah, there is. So is this a wasted special stipulation? I would say so doesn't have much meaning here. So could the buyer terminate from a contract standpoint? And that's what we go to look at when we have problems. We look at what the contract actually says. They would have a right to terminate based on the contract, yes. Seller's agents, how could this have been prevented? Just understand that if you receive an offer and it's FHA or VA and by some chance, they do include an appraisal gap clause. Consider the entire offer. That appraisal gap clause 
doesn't really do anything for us in this particular case. It's great that the buyer is willing to pay the difference, but they won't be contractually required to. Trying to special stipulate around amendatory clauses in FHA and VA exhibits, that just simply doesn't work out. So just be careful when you get those offers and they contain appraisal gap clauses, especially when there is an FHA or VA loan. And be careful with appraisal gap clauses in general. And be careful with appraisal gap clauses in general to make sure that it is a well-written special stipulation and it contains a floor. Remember, less is not more when it comes to special stipulations. I hope this information was helpful. Until next time, I hope you have an awesome day.